Hi, I'm Omar Pala, Environment Artist at Words and Softworks. Today we'll be going over a simple trick on rotating objects using materials, shaders, instead of blueprints to cut off from CPU and load that into a GPU work, where we're just going to rotate simple static meshes and we don't want to create blueprints for that, just a simple look that's going to rotate around the, the z-axis and just for the looks and the visual interest and we don't really have to set up blueprints for that and just a static mesh and the material is going to do a trick for that. It's very simple, just a few nodes will get us there. So let's get started. We're going to first create our material and we're going to call that M um, underscore rotate. So let's call it that. Let's open up our blueprint and shader graph, pardon. And I'm just going to add in a vector three node for the color and let's go with gray, plug that into our base color and then Let's go with a parameter for the roughness and plug that into there. Let's make it a little bit rough, right? And now um, we can start working. We're going to be using the world position offset to um, rotate our object. And this output is actually used for anything that's going to be moving the object through shader. This is the result that you want, but of course you have to be careful because moving object requires uh, manipulation of vertices through shader and that's why your normal has to uh, correspond accordingly. So let's add a time node and let's add another uh, parameter that's going to be our rotation speed and we're going to need a multiply node to multiply our time. Uh, and let's go with something like 0.1 for now. Um, and then we're going to use something called rotate about world axis cheap. Uh, and that cheap is actually telling you a lot. And that's one of the things is that this is going to be quite cheap. Also on the shader side of the thing. So uh, even though you're offloading from CPU to the GPU, you're not giving too extra work to the GPU to deal with because we're basically just going to rotate the object and it's going to be for the visual looks. Now you've got the rotation amount defined by our time and it requires a pivot point and we're going to use an object position for that uh, because we want the object to rotate on its center. So our pivot point is going to be object's own position. And we're going to plot the z-axis to the world position offset. And when we do that, we immediately see that the object here in the material preview is rotating on its own. However, our mesh has these jarring effects happening. And that's one of the reasons things I've said, when you're rotating the object through a shader, it's actually doing its trick based on the manipulation of vertices but our normals are staying the same because we don't have, we haven't defined it through the shader as well so uh, the normals are not corrected we have to correct them so to do that first i'm going to add a vector 3 node again like a color but this time i'm going to set our uh, blue channel which is going to correspond for the z as we have rotated on the z axis to flatten it and fix it completely. And we're going to do that by, again, fix it by uh, fix rotate about axis normals. Uh, the note explains itself pretty uh, well. And we're going to plug that there. And then our rotation angle is going to be our um, rotation times or uh, rotation speed or time. Plug that there. And then let's pull these a bit back. And when we plug this now into our normal, our trouble will be fixed. And our mesh is actually rotating. I don't I don't know if you get there we go. You can see it. And we have fixed our normals. And let's save that. And now, uh, if I actually go ahead and apply this to our meshes, you can actually see that our meshes are rotating through shader. It's perfect, there's no nothing, these are just static meshes and there's no blueprint or anything, they're rotating based on the material itself. Just plugging it to the material slot will get you there. Now you might say that um, you know we're flattening our normal, but hey, 
my my mesh has a normal map. I mean, it's uh, it's like a brick wall, for example. I've got an example here. So how to do that? So let's bring in our normal that we would normally plug in, and basically we're going to use something called blend angle corrected normals. These are used to especially for uh, normal detail normals, but also in the cases of like these will allow you to mesh two normal maps in, in cases like these. Uh, we want to plug our new tangent that we have fixed through um, Z1. We're, we're going to plug that into our base. We're going to plug this into additional. And if you actually hover over to the new tangent space vertex normal here, it's telling you where to plug in the cases like these. And then we're going to plug that into the normal. And when we do that and save, our material let's make this a little darker so we can see it better on on the world uh, let's make it even darker there we go um and now as you can see our meshes also have our normals uh working pretty well with it they're they have their own normal detail that we have you know our custom normal we have painted uh, and as well as their object rotating based on that. And here we have any object you can uh, drag in and drop from to, to the scene. And then uh, you can just apply this and then you have a rotating shape based on that. Um, you could create a material instance and then you could set the rotation speed uh, as we've defined and make it much faster so for example this arrow we're gonna plug that and it's rotating much faster and if you actually take a look at our shaded complexity it's on the dark green which is kind of the limit that we want so it's not expensive it's right on the scale that we want as you can see the bat is corresponding to the red so you want to stay around here as best as you could in the greens and it's um, not expensive at all we have offloaded work from CPU that we could have done these in the uh, blueprint, which would uh, mean that the CPU is mostly doing the trick. Whereas here we have made it through the material, which is uh, the work of the GPU, which for GPU, this is actually nothing. It's a very simple um, few nodes and it's really easy for GPU to pull this off. So yeah, you can use this especially for your portfolio scenes where you have a few things rotating about. Um, you could use these with blueprints, for example, but also I think this way is kind of more simple, uh, especially for more uh, simpler things that do not have any interaction just for the looks and visuals. You could go away with that approach. So I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time.